Hello and welcome to another episode of Road and Race. In this episode, I'm going to talk about the best mod you can make to your 350Z. What is it? It's a button. Uh, more importantly, it's a button that Nissan should have fitted at the factory, but chose not to. Let me explain. So picture the scene. You're doing a track day. You've turned off the traction control because you want full control of the car. You don't want to doing anything behind your back. You're doing a fast lap. Everything's going well. You're really getting into the groove. You come into a fast right-hander and all of a sudden the car grabs the brakes and your car goes kind of out of control and it's all a bit more oh, bit exciting and there's panic and oh basically the car does something that you don't want it to do so what's going on so whilst you can turn off the traction control Nissan don't give you any way of turning off the stability control and that's what's interfering and causing all these potential problems now it's there for safety but yet, if you're on a track and the car does something that you don't want it to do, that can be potentially very dangerous. So can you disable the stability control? Well, there are a couple of hacks. The first one is to pull a fuse out of the fuse box and that will disable it. It will also disable your ABS as well. And the problem with that is that it makes your wheels lock up a lot quicker when braking. And now you're probably thinking, well, Neil, you know, you're not, not braking properly. But there's something to do maybe with the brake, the brake bias on the cars. And when you disable the ABS, it, it throws that out because the car wheels will lock a lot quicker than normally. And it's a bit strange, but trust me, I've tried it. It doesn't really work. So the second hack is to actually disable the gyroscope, which kind of is integral to the stability control functioning. And that's just in the center console. That's fine, cheap, nice little solution. The thing is though, it's always off. So even when you're driving on normal roads and you might want the uh, kind of helping hand of stability control, it's not gonna be there. Plus two lights on your dashboard are constantly on, which isn't ideal, is it? Because also then it masks other problems like whether your ABS system's failed or your, your traction control system's failed. So you really don't really wanna go down that route. So the solution I wanted was a way of temporarily disabling this gyroscope with a button as and when I want it to. Luckily, on the Nissan 350Z UK forum, there's a user called CS2000 and he had actually made a little kit. You just have to follow his simple little guide to wire it all in. You just need to remove the center console, do a tiny bit of soldering and a little bit of drilling. Here's where I'm going to install the new button. And here's the gyroscope exposed. Here's the main control cable for the gyroscope, which we need to attach the switch to.
and then connect the blue wire to the other end of the gyroscope control wire. Now we need to tap into this grey cable for some power. Now we just need to make a hole for the button. Here you can see it all wired in. And here's the finished button looking resplendent in the center console. Really easy to use, just push it once and these two warning lights will come up on the dash. That means your gyroscope is disabled. Then push it again, turn the engine off and everything's back to normal. So as you can see, a fairly straightforward installation. Probably the hardest bit is the soldering itself, especially in those cramped conditions inside the car. The biggest tip I can give is get yourself a really powerful soldering iron. Uh, if you want to buy the one I use, which is in incredible, amazing, um, I'll put a link in the description box for you so you can uh, check that out. So does it actually work though? Well, I'm pleased to say it works a treat. You, uh, I've been to a track and tested it out and with it off, there's no sudden intervention from the car. There's no hairy moments anymore, which is really nice. Good news is that also the ABS does stay on so all the brakes are working as well as they ever did before, which is great. Uh, I'll put a link to CS2000's kit on the forum in the description box as well. So that's it. If you have any questions about the install, leave it in the comments and I'll try my best to get back to you. And um, as always, thanks for watching.